It's late in 2022, and a crypto winter is upon us. Ethereum is sunsetting post-merge, and all the markets are upside down, which has led a lot of people to exit the mining industry, and I say good. I am not referring to our fellow miners who have chosen to turn off their rigs, but the individuals who are simply bitching and selling off their equipment. They are the people who got in to chase the dollar, never truly understanding Web3 development, never seeing the potential of what lies ahead, and ultimately never comprehending their role in the industry. I've chosen to create a new series of videos that will help individuals who are choosing to build their first rig above and beyond their standard personal computer. Like the PC, a rig needs a housing for the simple purpose of holding the GPUs that will be doing the work. So in this video, we will begin with the almighty mining frame. Future videos will discuss other components such as motherboards and risers. There's a lot of ways that our objective can be accomplished and will be influenced by one's personal preference, the environment that the equipment is placed in, and the budget that's being worked with. Do a simple search on Amazon and you will be introduced to the variety of different options available. I'm going to share my experience and opinion on what I have chosen, but note this is by no means the only way, nor is it the best solution but simply the one I have chosen. Let's pause and note that the cost of equipment is approaching a two-year low. Others have commented that during these bear markets, it makes for a perfect opportunity to retool or grow one's mining operations. That is precisely why this topic is valid at this time. I like the KISS acronym, so let's move over to the frame I recommend for first-time builders. Here it is. It's the super generic, mass-produced, Chinese-fabricated mining frame with no specific name. It's not rocket science, but I'll put one together while I share some thoughts on why I chose this one. The concept of the frame is appealing, and I like the fact that we can find the frame at least in three sizes that will nicely support 6, 8, and up to 12 GPUs. At the moment, the greatest appeal to this frame is the pricing. Looking at eBay, the small 6 GPU frame can be had for approximately $16. Let's put that in perspective. What else can $16 get you? Unfortunately, not a lot nowadays. So if one can pick up a mining frame at this low price, it's a bargain. Let's not overlook, it was only a year ago or so that these same frames were selling for over $50. Larger frames were pushing 100 and let's not forget the big box frames selling close to 1000 Now let's pause and speak to profit. Most often it's discussed in association to the information found on what to mine. And while there is a place for that conversation, it's only a very small part of the bigger picture. And frankly, it's misused. If we as a community are going to refer to what the mine, we need to stop talking about profit, but emphasize yield and its relation to revenue, not profit. Our path to profitability will be different for each of us. No matter our mining strategy, our shared goal should always be to practice the least expensive one that allows us to achieve the profitability with our rigs and that includes the frame. Back to that frame. Assembly is pretty straightforward. It takes about five minutes to assemble, which is also going to be faster than building your own frame from scratch. In my experience, I have several of each size, and I've concluded that the small frame, the one advertised to hold six to eight cards, is too small. If the budget will allow, and knowing that there are larger frames, Allow yourself to have more flexibility in building your setup. In my case, I am now exclusively using the large frame that holds up to 12 GPUs. Yes, it does cost more, but it allows me to have better card density and airflow. When GPUs are too close together, suffocating the airflow becomes a possibility. In the interest of cooler temperatures, 
it's good to have that flexibility to adjust your spacing between cards. While projects like CASPA and Ergo have reduced our concerns regarding temperatures, projects like Ethereum Classic and Ravencoin will always remind us that there is such a thing as too hot. If you're using an ATX power supply, there's a place to easily secure it under the cards next to the mounts for the motherboard. There's not much more about the frame to highlight except for the crossbar, which allows a place for the GPU and riser to sit. And then with the use of a simple screw, the card can be secured to the frame. There's also an option to add 120 millimeter fans, which will assist airflow. Well, let's remember to keep them simple. There's really no reason for LEDs here. There are options such as the OctaMiner to enclose your GPUs, but I found that I like the open frame strategy. In my opinion, I have more options on where I can place the rig, and I can access any components relatively quickly, allowing for a very easy visual inspection. Once you're up and running, it's fair to observe that the rig may look like a hot mess. So with any build, taking the steps to ensure good cable management is time well spent. I suppose I spent more time speaking about profitability compared to the actual frame, but I think that highlights the frame's simplicity. It should serve as a reminder that there's a lot of options, but no reason to spend too much money. In any case, I hope this video provided something helpful. If so, a hit on the like button is appreciated, and new subscribers are always welcome. Be mindful of your uptime, and thanks for watching.